Well, um, hello everyone. Welcome back to the show. Today we are very happy to have Mr. Arnold August with us. Uh, Mr. August is an author and a journalist living in Montreal. So welcome, Mr. August. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And once again, uh, thanks for having me. No, thank you so much for coming on. So uh, let's jump straight into it o over the question of Cuba right now, which is a very, very, a very controversial topic at the moment. So, uh, so interestingly, despite the disagreement, right? Yeah. So, so this, uh, despite the disagreement that the two U.S. parties have over internal politics, in foreign politics, the Biden administration isn't that dissimilar than the Trump administration. Uh, for instance, former uh, former Secretary of State uh, Pompeo put Cuba on the list of states sponsoring terrorism without a proper approval or review from the Congress. So why didn't Biden remove Cuba from the list when he became president? Uh, that's a very good uh, loaded question. Thank you very much. I'd like to start, if you don't mind, with the very first sentence in that question, so we can really take it apart, in which you mentioned the, uh, you know, the internal disagreements. Uh, I, I'm not sure that internal disagreements are really that important. Uh, it's a question of degree. I don't know if any, well, any of you saw the town hall with uh, Joe Biden on CNN with Don Lemon a couple of days ago. What did he say about the crucial issue that impacted the United States and the world, the Black Lives Matter movement, and uh, the literal, you know, uh, and the extreme violence by the police against Afro-American and others. What did he say? Well, he's not for defunding police. On the contrary, I want to increase funding for police. And of course, you get the usual platitudes. You want to take the bad apples out. Most of the police are okay and all that. So there's no real, uh, nothing really dissimilar there to take just one example. On the issue of um, uh, uh, um, being more or less aggressive than Trump, uh, this may surprise some people, but I said that during the elections, when everyone was really hanging on to Biden as the solution to Trump, when I said, watch out, it's very possible that Biden be, will be even more aggressive than Trump on international affairs. Why did I say that? How many times do we see him on TV saying, I'm not going to be soft like, like Trump is. I'm not going to be soft on dictators like President Xi of China or uh, Putin or the Castros in Cuba, Cuba or Maduro in Venezuela. I'm going to stand up to these dictators. So, you know, taking from taking from that, one can say, well, perhaps he's even going to be more aggressive. And that's the way things are going when we get to Cuba later on. We will see how it actually has increased the sanctions just yesterday against Cuba. So I just wanted to make this small caveat be, before going uh, into the second part of that question was a, about a Pompeo putting uh, Cuba on the list of so-called state sponsors of terrorism. Uh, why did he do that? Uh, Pompeo did it specifically with regards to Venezuela. Now, in that resolution of the Secretary of State, Pompeo, just days before his mandate had ended, in it has says, the second statement says, they are against Cuba because it supports the Maduro government. Now, what is interesting is that they have they have this in common. Like when you ask, why did Biden not take Cuba off the uh, state sponsors of the list of, of states sponsoring terrorism? It's very simple. Biden administration agrees with Trump that Cuba has to be pressured to release its moral and political support for Maduro. That, that, that's a very important point. Um, I, I think that, um, I, I don't know if, we, if you recall, when, when um, the uh, confirmation hearing in the Senate for Secretary of State Blinken, just a few days before Biden was inaugurated, he, in that, I watched with the whole four hours. It's very, uh, it's really, you know, uh, a real eye opener how behind the scenes, supposedly parties supposedly having different point of views, they actually, in that Senate hearing of four hours, they actually worked out a bipartisan foreign policy. Take the issue 
of uh, the uh, state uh, uh, list of states sponsoring terrorism, which you raised. During that four hours period, from the amongst the senators, such as Marco Rubio, right winger, uh, Bob Menendez, another right winger from the Democratic Party, they did not raise the issue with uh, Blinken. I hope, in a sense, I hope you're not going to take Cuba off the uh, list of states sponsoring terrorism. That you know, at the same time, Blinken did not mention. That list. In other words, they worked out a modus vivendi. They worked out some kind of a deal on the issue of Venezuela, on the issue of Cuba. They are going to follow the Trump administration with regard to these two countries. Well, that was a very, very, very thorough answer, very detailed. So, as a kind of a follow up to this, uh, well, you mentioned Menendez, you mentioned Rubio. They're both, yes. you know, uh, one is a Democrat, one is a Republican. Exactly. So what do you think is the, like, what is driving the bipartisan consensus on Cuba? Well, I think uh, the, the, the question is very important. I'd actually give a short background, if I may, on the issue of the elections, the last presidential elections. Uh, a lot of people are saying, oh, this, this is a historical elections. We're finally going to beat that fascist Trump and have Biden being put into power. But in my view, it was historical at elections, but not as because what they are saying, they defeated a fascist Trump. It is historical because according to my reading of American history, which I've been doing a long time, this is the first time in American elections, you have two Republican parties vying out for power. Like, there was a whole important section of anti-Trump Republicans organized a call what is called what is called the Lincoln Project, who grafted on to the Biden administration to oppose Trump. Now, once, of course, Biden got elected, he has a debt to pay to these uh, anti-Trump Republicans. And so you have for the first time a real Republican Party. And I guess you would say the, Demo the so-called Democratic Party was a, a light version of Republican party. So taking this into, into account, uh, everything else falls into place. For example, I think you mentioned uh, Cuba. Now, a lot of people have been saying, well, uh, Biden said, uh, promised that he's going to change, uh, he's going to reverse the uh, Biden administration's uh, 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 sanctions against Cuba dur during the uh, uh, pandemic and perhaps go back to the situation that existed before with Obama when Biden was vice president. But people, unfortunately, like I'm, I'm a, I really read these things in its original format. Now, when Biden says uh, we are going to review the uh, policy towards Cuba, he also says always taking into account our core values of democracy, human rights. Isn't that nice? So it's very convenient. Anytime they can declare as they are doing now, there's that the so-called violation of human rights in Cuba. Well, this whole policy of going back to Obama uh, is, is no longer there. And uh, I, I think that he also said, as I mentioned before, just to, he said uh, he is going to, Biden is going to stand up to dictators like Castro. So we have to look at, you know, that, that promise he did keep, okay? Now, we have to look at what they actually said during the elections, not sort of cherry picking what looks uh, good for us under the false notion that there is really a choice between these two parties that they're going to bring around major change.